Hey, I'm Jacqueline Nolis, and today I want to be talking about how Alaska challenged my preconceived notions of storing sunset data. This whole talk is just about me trying to make a sunrise sunset chart for an arbitrary location. So it shows the course of a year, what times the sunrise and sunset are. This talk is going to be about a lot of messy data. So we're going to use something I like to call the data mesometer. The data mesometer indicates how messy data can be from beautiful, pristine sparkling to okay, then all the way to dumpster fire dystopian. So first thing, we need to get the data to make the chart. Turns out that's super easy. There's a sunrise sunset API you can use, and that API will give you a nicely formatted JSON file that has the sunrise and sunsets in it. API data from with JSON puts us in the pristine range. But it turns out that there's more than just sunrise and sunset in this API. There are a bunch of other things like nautical twilight. And when you dig into this and Google it, it turns out those are probably good things to put in the chart too, making this more complicated. I mean, that makes the data slightly messier, but this is all fine. This is all doable. Okay, so I use that API and I query for each day of the year, what is the sunrise, sunset, and other times. I take that year's worth of data and let's try plotting it in R. Uh-oh, this is a straight line. This is not what we wanted. If you look, this turns out what's happening is that it's not just returning the time of the sunrise and sunset. The API is returning the date time of the sunrises and sunsets. So the y-axis is actually an entire year. So you have a year for x, year for y, thus you get a straight line. We can fix this by taking all of the date times from the API and converting them to just a date. We're still in the greenish. So once we delete those dates and it, they turn just to times, it's starting to look like the chart we want. We get those nice squiggles, but oh wait, oh my God. Now this chart has a 33 o'clock. It has a noon at 20 o'clock and there is no daylight savings. It's just a smooth line. Those all seem like problems. And once you think about it, those actually all turn out to be time zone problems because the issue that's here is this is not in the right time zone for Seattle. This is in UTC. If you're dealing with a 33 o'clock and time zones, that puts you in okay. So now we need to pass the location's longitude, latitude, and time zone, which is more annoying. And it's much more annoying to keep track of the time zone being correct at each different point we use dates throughout our plot. But fine, we can do that. Hey, once you fix the time zone issues, this looks pretty close to what we want. That chart seems like the curves we need. Uh, Obviously, the styling needs some work, but that seems pretty close. Um, that chart right there is for Seattle. Um, so before we do the styling, you know, just for the sake of testing it, let's try throwing in a couple other locations too. Like, um, let's say Fairbanks, Alaska. It turns out if you try plotting Fairbanks, Alaska with this, you get utter nonsense. Alaska is so far north that there are days where the twilights do not occur. And so the API returns filler data. If we filter out the filler data, presumably things should then be okay. Just kidding. Things are not okay. Even with the filler data removed, you get strange occurrences like events happening at 25 o'clock or strange behavior around the summer in Alaska. After going day by day into the data, I discovered on April 7th in Fairbanks, Alaska, astronomical twilight is at 1.34 a.m. April 8th, which is to say some of these events on the chart happen on different days than they are happening. It really is complicated to think about, but technically correct. Oh, we're in hell now. But if I were to crop the chart at midnight at the top and the bottom, that seems like should just kind of hide this problem. It looks right, but it's still wrong because if events happen really late at night in Alaska, so much they get caught off at the top of the chart, that means they need to technically wrap around and show up at the bottom of the chart. So if the sun sets super, super, super late at night, that means it sets early in the morning. And in fact, that does happen in Alaska. The sun sets super early in the morning. At this point, I do not care anymore. I figured it's close enough. People aren't going to use it for things that are that close to the poles. I'm just going to go ahead and ship it. And I included this plotting function in my GGIRL R package. But here's the thing. I can't let that sit. 
For years, I had that plotting function on my computer and I tried to make it 100% accurate and I couldn't, and I couldn't, and I couldn't. But I am proud to say that this talk made me sit down and finally figure out what is the correct way to get the sunrises and sunsets to wrap around at the right times in Alaska so that you get a 100% accurate chart, even with weird things happening with the dates and times of sunsets. You need to get, for each day, three days worth of data. The data for that day, the data for the next day, the data for the day before, and plot that for each day over the course of the entire year. Take all that data and then truncate the top and the bottom, and then the chart will be accurate. This sounds like insanity, but it actually works. And then I discovered the separate problem of days with zero daylight, which I had to solve as well. So here's the final version of the chart. And boy, what a journey it took to get there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. And if you want to hear more talks by me, you can go to my website, jnolis.com, where I have lots more talks, many of which are much less frustrating than this one.